Uh, if that's the case, then why so critical of hydrogen fuel cells, which are another pathway to zero emission vehicles? We do it red. Haven't been so critical if you stand by those comments? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean um, I don't want to turn this into a debate on hydrogen fuel cells because I, I just think that they're extremely silly. Um, <laughs> We're hearing about green hydrogen, blue hydrogen and enormous quantities of hydrogen fuel in Australia. However, the fact is that the use of hydrogen in electric vehicles will be short-sighted and ultimately unviable. With major scientific and global penetration challenges, practicality of hydrogen automobiles must be questioned in order to avoid billion-dollar whales that divert money away from commercially viable technology. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. So hang in tight if you want to know why hydrogen fuel cells and hydrogen engines are not really considered as the future. A decade ago, it appeared like there were only two viable options for replacing fossil fuels and personal transportation, electricity and hydrogen. The hydrogen option provided a lot of advantages. You could fill up your car just like you would with fossil fuel, but instead of poisonous emissions, the exhaust would be pure water vapor. It sounded like the ideal first step towards a better future in which we could continue to use our vehicles as before, but with environmental consequences. When compared to the inconvenience of waiting for an EV's battery to recharge, hydrogen appeared to be the far more convenient option. However, 10 years later, it's obvious that battery electric vehicles or BEVs have taken over the transition to more environmentally sustainable transportation. Only 7,500 hydrogen automobiles had been sold globally by the end of 2019, However, by the latter part of 2018, there were already 5 million plug-in electric vehicles or PEVs on the market and sales have been rapidly increasing since then. The BEV category has never been less than 55% and is presently closer to 75%. According to the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, BEVs accounted for 4.3% of the entire car market in the UK in May 2020, a 131.8% rise from the previous year. While battery electric car sales are fast increasing, with the technology widely accepted as the future of zero emissions driving, hydrogen cars are still largely underestimated. Although there are a few hydrogen-powered cars for purchase in some parts of the world, few people are investing in or even considering them. So, do hydrogen fuel cell vehicles have a bright future? Car manufacturers have been working with hydrogen fuel cell and hydrogen combustion engine for several years, seeking to figure out how to use the universe's most abundant resource to power cars. While progress has been achieved, it has been glacial in comparison to battery electric vehicle technology. At the time, the Toyota Mirai and Hyundai Nexo were the only mainstream hydrogen-powered vehicles in the market. However, more hydrogen-powered cars and vans are on the horizon, with manufacturers like BMW, Land Rover, and Vauxhall planning new hydrogen-powered models within the next few years. Because refueling a hydrogen car is identical to filling up with gasoline or diesel, it also turns out to be almost as rapid. A tank takes about 5 minutes to fill. This is unquestionably preferable than the lengthy wait times that go along with powering a battery electric vehicle. However, there are some challenges associated with it. The current infrastructure is one of the primary reasons for the slow adoption of hydrogen vehicles. According to UK H2 Mobility, the UK now has six hydrogen filling stations open, with five more planned. This is obviously significantly less than the number of fuel stations and public EV charging points, and running a hydrogen car is impossible unless you have one on your doorstep or a private one at your workplace. Concerns have also been raised concerning the environmental impact of hydrogen, which requires a significant amount of electricity to create in large numbers, even when derived from renewable sources. Furthermore, hydrogen is a carrier of energy rather than a source of energy. It functions as a carrier in the same way as water does in a hydronic heating system or electrons do in a copper wire. The energy costs for distributing hydrogen, whether by truck or pipeline, are several times more than for traditional energy carriers like natural gas or gasoline. Even the most efficient fuel cells cannot recover these losses. In comparison, the wind-to-wheel efficiency of electric vehicles is at least three times that of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now back to the video. 
Another issue is storage. For safety reasons, some gas must be allowed to evaporate when storing liquid hydrogen, which means that a car would lose half of its fuel within two weeks, even if not driven. Furthermore, it was discovered that the output input efficiency cannot be much higher than 30%, but advanced batteries have a cycle efficiency of more than 80%. It was also found out that in every circumstance, the energy intake outweighs the energy supplied by a factor of 3 to 4. A large portion of today's hydrogen is derived from natural gas, but the future concentration will be fully on renewable sources, though this will take some time. In theory, it's always better to use wind or solar-generated power in the grid rather than converting it to hydrogen, but it's practically impossible to store enough energy in batteries for heavy transport needs, or as is frequently the case for car drivers, to get enough electricity to where it's needed. Nonetheless, hydrogen continues to have niches where its basic strengths, lightness and rapid refueling provide it an obvious advantage. While you may plan your personal driving schedule around strategic battery charging stops, this is not ideal for a commercial vehicle that needs to travel for extended periods of time and distances with just brief pauses to refuel. Along with that, the power of hydrogen gas itself must not be underestimated. Although gasoline is slightly more hazardous than hydrogen, hydrogen is a highly combustible and volatile material that frequently makes headlines due to its potential hazards. In comparison to gas, hydrogen has no odor, making leak detection nearly impossible. Sensors must be installed to detect leakage. Another factor that makes hydrogen something not much useful is the fact that it's dependent on fossil fuels. Although hydrogen energy is renewable and has a low environmental impact, its separation from oxygen necessitates the use of non-renewable resources such as coal, oil and natural gas. To manufacture hydrogen fuel, fossil fuels are still required. Despite the fact that hydrogen is abundant, the cost of harnessing it limits its widespread use. As you know, breaking the status quo is quite difficult. The world is still ruled by energy derived from fossil fuels. There's no framework in place to secure future inexpensive and sustainable hydrogen energy for the average car owner. Even if hydrogen might become cheap right now, it would take years for it to become the most popular source of energy since vehicles and service stations would need to be modified to meet hydrogen requirements. This would necessitate a significant investment. It is true that hydrogen energy is a renewable resource because it's abundantly available and its impacts have been greatly underappreciated. However, hydrogen companies will require non-renewable energy sources, such as fossil, that's coal, natural gas and oil, to separate it from oxygen. We may be able to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels by embracing hydrogen energy, but eliminating it from the system will be difficult. So, can we say that hydrogen vehicles are going to have a future? Well, according to some experts, that might not be the case, and they're arguing that the EVs have already won the battle there. The hydrogen produced must be compressed, refrigerated and transferred to the hydrogen station, which is a 90% efficient operation. Inside the car, hydrogen is turned into energy at a 60% efficiency. Finally, the electricity used in the vehicle's motor is approximately 95% efficient. Only 38% of the initial electricity was used, 38 watts out of 100, or uh, F, for efficiency. Can we honestly accept that we built this vast green infrastructure only to lose 62% of it? Well, certainly not. Electric vehicles use wires to transport energy from the source to the vehicle. In its voyage across the grid, the same 100 watts of power from the same turbine loses around 5% of energy. You lose 10% of your energy by charging and discharging the lithium-ion battery plus another 5 by utilizing electricity to propel the car, so you're down to 80 watts. So in comparison to that, hydrogen engines or fuel cells still need to make their way up to the top. Though with the evolution of technology, it could become possible, but still it's a long way to go. What are your thoughts on it though? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed watching this video, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.